Hollywood itself is a word, the word is interesting because it's a word that comes from a pagan, uh, uh, Hollywood is the holy wood. And it was the wood that the magical wands were made out of in the pagan uh, sorcery, magic. And these wands were believed that the sorcerers that possessed them could uh, put people into trances and control them. This is part of, I mean, this is symbolic, but it's also important to understand that part of what Hollywood literally does is it puts people into trances. It's a dream state. They call it the dream machine in the United States. fantasies for people, it puts people into these things. Now one of the things that's interesting that in the p part of what's done in movie theaters, in darkened uh, rooms where people watch television, is literally a, a trance state that occurs. So what's called suspended state of disbelief. You enter into a state you suspend your disbelief and enter into a, a state whereby you begin to believe what you internally realize is imagination. It's falsehood. Films are, are, are magic. It's just magic. You go and you watch these things and people get caught up in them. People cry during films. All this catharsis that takes place in these things. M many of the films, and, and this is an important element, in the control mechanism is literally allow people to go and have certain type of uh, catharsis as a purging experience which Aristotle talks about the, the the necessary element one of the necessary elements of tragedy is to create this cathartic experience and this is why a lot of the films especially also news and things like this this is why news is very important in this culture everybody watches the news they watch they have this tragic cathartic experience of watching the tragedies of others and then feeling safe and complacent in their own experience of the suspended state of illusory well-being. So these are very intricate and sophisticated methods. Now I, I think it's dangerous, the, although there are elements, that there's concerted efforts that take place, there's also a lot of people that have similar worldviews that aren't necessarily working together in concerted efforts.
I'm not supposed to be up here. Looking at her. I just wanted to know. Yeah. When you're old enough, I suppose. You should know the story. Okay, here we go. It was 1832. On a night much like this. Charles Carroll was the last surviving signer of the Declaration of Independence. He was also a member of a secret society known as the Masons. And he knew he was dying. He woke up his stable boy in the middle of the night and ordered him to take him to the White House to see Andrew Jackson. Because it was urgent that he speak to the president. Did he talk to him? No, he never got the chance. The president wasn't there that night. <laughs> but Charles Carroll had a secret. So he took into his confidence the one person he could. My grandfather's grandfather, Thomas Gates. What was the secret? A treasure. A treasure beyond all imagining.